All of us at some point of our life have probably thought about the possibility of aliens on other planets existing with us, possibly visiting us, but have you ever stopped to consider why we haven't really found any physical evidence for aliens? This is What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. So first of all, this episode will deal a lot with speculation because we don't know, and it's a little like our artificial intelligence episode, Yeah. but at least with artificial intelligence, we had some background. I mean, we have artificial intelligence systems that currently exist, and we can kind of extrapolate that uh, and see what would exist in the future. Yeah, but we don't have any aliens. Well, I mean, at least to my knowledge, we don't have any aliens. So, in, also, I think we'll both be in agreement in this episode that uh, people claiming that they've been abducted by aliens and uh, otherwise seen UFOs, that's all made up. I yeah, think if, if you're hoping to hear us address the UFO abduction problem, here's us addressing it. We don't believe it. <laughs> But that's not to say that it's not interesting to talk about aliens, yeah. because there's uh, many scientists, I might even say most scientists in the world, think that aliens probably do exist. It's it's almost a probabilistic argument. Yeah. For some context, there's 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and within the observable universe, there's at least 100 billion galaxies. So if you multiply that 100 billion times 100 billion, there's there's an uncountable almost uh, number of opportunities for life to have arisen on these planets yeah. and evolved and became advanced intelligent species like we are. So then the question, of course, is why don't we see any of that? If there's, yeah. if there's really trillions of opportunities for them to arise, you would feel at some point they would have contacted all, us already, or we would have looked out and seen some galactic civilization. And really, this problem keeps getting more and more paradoxical, or more, worse, maybe, if you want to put it that way. Because, I mean, while we're observing the cosmos with more advanced technologies, we keep finding more and more Earth-like planets in just even our local group of of stars yeah last, which, last time i checked there were uh, i mean back back in the 1990s so to show some historical progression here we discovered one alien or we discovered one exoplanet it's what they're called yeah. planets yeah. outside the solar system i think it was in 1994 and nowadays we know about over 1000 and i think we know about 50 of them that are possibly habitable planets. So yeah. that means that they have similar conditions to li uh, to Earth. And so the question is, if there's all of these examples in just our small search space over the course of 20 years, yeah. and there's trillions of stars we haven't looked at... And, and we're working with um, w without hyper-advanced technology either. I mean... We're working with our telescopes yeah. and our math. And of course, we're we're bound to find. I mean, if the if the current trend continues, then we're bound to just keep discovering these exoplanets, yeah. and we're bound to in in turn discover more habitable exoplanets, so planets that life might have evolved on or has evolved. So I think that leads us into our second part, and because we don't want to just talk about how unlikely it is. We want to no. also explore some possible well, solutions well, to well, this. I mean, I, I think I think we need we need to get into this. We need to say the name. This is called perhaps you've heard of it before, but this is called the Fermi paradox. The idea that if civilizations can advance to a space age and if civilizations can expand across the galaxy and if life is common and if Earth-like planets are common then why hasn't someone already, why hasn't some alien species already colonized the galaxy? Or even, or, at the very least, just contacted us. Yeah. I mean, all it takes is an alien civilization in uh, Alpha Centauri to just send a radio signal saying, we are here. And that's all it takes. And yeah. so, obviously, it's very unlikely... Uh, given our current state of knowledge that such a situation such as our, would, ours would occur, yeah, but mean, it has we, occurred. We've been, I mean, the universe has been around for how many billions of years? I like, think at 13.8. 13, 13, yeah, okay. And, billion years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Billions of years, suffice it to say. The universe has been around for billions of years. So you'd think if these conditions have been around even for the last billion years right which is less than 10 percent of the age of the universe yeah 
if these conditions have been around for that long, surely, if it's possible, some alien species would have advanced beyond their own planet. And that's what the Fermi Paradox is all about. And so the interesting part of the Fermi Paradox, what I was getting into earlier yeah. before we named it, is the solutions. And obviously yeah. there's there's no one solution. Yeah. It's there, speculation. There's many possible solutions. They're, hi- they're not even really hypotheses. They're more ideas. Ideas of what might be without any evidence, uh, really. Yeah, just just possible just possibilities, you know. So obvious. I, I think I think it's uh, it's best to address the most obvious uh, solution, and that's that the Earth is just rare. It's so rare that life has only evolved once, yeah. and we're the only species in the universe. But of course, that argument is a little bit flawed because w- w- as we look out into the cosmos, we find more and more planets that seem to be Earth-like. Or at least seem to be habitable for life. If we look at the, if, if we look at their atmospheres, if we try to figure out what their, the planet is made of, it seems like they could harbor life. So the fact that Earth would be so rare doesn't really fit with our current understanding of the universe. Well, not only that, but it goes against uh, somewhat of a central tenet of astronomy. And ever since astronomy was a budding science, uh, people have, well, I guess ever since Galileo, since it's named after him, but there's something called the Galilean perspective. And it's basically that, um, you shouldn't assume that your current situation is any spe- is anything special. And so this is to address people who used to believe that the Earth was the middle of the solar system. Right. And obviously this, that's a, sp- or not even that, the, the middle of the universe. People mm-hmm. used to think that Earth was the center of the universe. And then the Galilean perspective says, well, first you should assume that nothing about your current situation is any special, anything special. So you shouldn't automatically assume that you're the center of the universe. And this has done well for astronomers so far. Using this principle, we, I mean, it broadens our horizons and has enabled us to understand that we're not at the center of the universe. We're not even at the center of our galaxy or solar system. But then it seems like saying that we are the most unique life form in the galaxy, we're the only ones that have evolved to be intelligent, that's in contrast to the Galilean perspective, because that assumes that there is something special about us. It seems like a step back into something that I think most, even people who don't know a lot about science would agree is sort of a, was sort of a scientific uh, dark age for astronomy, where we thought the Earth was the center of the universe. So that that's... sort of kills thought. So that, yes, so it can kind of serve as a philosophical underpinning why people don't readily accept that the, we're, we're the most special uh, planet in the universe. It's because we've said that about everything else and it's turned out to be wrong, so we're, we're not going to hope that we're the most special this time. And that me, uh, of course, uh, if that's not the solution, then what is? Why don't we see alien life forms out there? Well... There's the idea that maybe there are alien life forms out there, but maybe there's something stopping them from developing to the point where they could, uh, where we could see them. Or contact with them over a long period of time. Because it's possible that civilizations will wipe themselves out due to war, disease, uh, I, I mean, any anthropogenic cause of catastrophe. Uh, climate change on their own planet, uh, anything really that prevents them from advancing to a point where they can have a long civilization able to contact with people over the eons. Yes, Th- this idea is called the Great Filter. The idea is there's something that filters out life when it goes through this barrier, whether it be, uh, you know, the developing of life. There's some point along the track of life where life meets something and then it either dies or it goes forward and it's not very likely that it makes it past now when people talk about the great filter too it's it's an interesting it's an interesting position to be in because a lot of the discussion revolves around whether we've passed the great filter or whether it's still ahead of us right the the great filter could be something like uh the development of life beyond single beyond single celled life or the development of complex life Things like that. Maybe it's the development of life in general. Maybe Earth-like conditions aren't enough 
to create life. Maybe that's the great filter, but there's a different argument to be made about the great filter happening later. So some scientists have proposed that if we someday discover that uh, life is on Mars, like, like bacterial life, then that would actually be a very bad discovery because that would mean that life is common throughout the universe, most likely. Yeah. It's just that the great filter is ahead of us, meaning that life might be common, but intelligent life spreading across the universe is not common, which if the great filter is ahead of us, that means that in some, some time between now and maybe a thousand years from now, something huge is going to come and just wipe us all out. And I think when you talk about something huge coming along and wiping us all out... We can look back at a few of our past episodes and get get an idea of what a great filter ahead could be. Maybe it's creating AI. Yes, and that will lead us to our next solution to the problem. Or, or actually, maybe it's creating. Maybe it's climate change that they that civilizations will usually use up all the resources on their planet before they can leave. But anyway, continue. Right. Well, I was going to bring up another solution to the problem. That is that in a previous episode, we talked about the technological singularity. That's the idea that we'll one day develop artificial intelligence that's more intelligent than we are. Now, the reason why that this this leads us to a multitude of solutions, actually, right. to the Fermi paradox, because it, it pinpoints a place at which something fundamental about civilizations can change. Uh, the, the way that civil, it, it might be the nature of civilizations to produce machines that are more advanced than them. Right. Like an intelligent creature could naturally move towards the assumption, well, I can do more uh, things regarding my intelligence if all this menial labor is out of the way, which leads to the development of robots, and then robots leads to the development of AI in some form or another. So the reason why this can lead to new avenues of solution is because AIs might be less predictable than humans or e even aliens. Yeah. Meaning because that we as we talked about in our last episode, AIs are given a goal. They don't have the same driving ideas as anything that was brought up through evolution, right? Something brought up through evolution is probably driven by at least an intelligent species is driven by evolution is probably driven by curiosity is probably driven by the need to eat the wants to reproduce things like that all those would be totally alien to an ai an ai would have a goal something like um expand into space and then that would be its goal or as i was going to say they could just have a goal to kill themselves or just never contact any alien species yeah there's there's so many options they the ai could be given goals to wipe out other alien or other alien species intelligent species that arose and so maybe the reason why we haven't been getting any messages is because it's not intelligent for if you're a budding a civilization it's not intelligent to start sending messages and saying is anyone out there because if you contact this uh ultra ai that ends up that rules the galaxy then they could say oh there's another intelligent life form let's wipe them out so right. it could just be the consensus among aliens to never contact anyone and of course ai as well it could just be the con unspoken consensus to never reach out because they're in fear that someone might destroy all of them if they do find out. This has been What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. That actually leads into another idea, the um, nature preserve or zoo hypothesis. This one is a little bit less likely. Well, the, the, likely, we don't really know. All right, but th it's this one tell. seems less probable when you talk about it, when you think through it, because of how much uh, cooperation it would require. But the idea with this one is there are intelligent species out there, and they do um, have galaxy-faring civilizations, but they all have a prime directive sort of deal from Star Trek, except they uphold it instead of break it all the time. You know, they say, we won't touch uh, budding civilizations, we won't, um, we, we won't affect their growth, we'll just let them grow, we'll study them for anthropology or something like that. That's possible, but again, it, it's, it's sort of an iffy uh, solution to the Fermi Paradox, in my opinion. So as the zoo hypothesis, it gets its name from uh, literal zoos, right? Yeah. It could be possible that aliens seeded life on Earth. And they're watching our development um, just as in a scientific experiment. So it's possible that we don't receive any contact because aliens are preventing that contact. 
They want to see us develop, and they don't want to reveal themselves, uh, or they're waiting for some crucial uh, moment in time to reveal themselves, which was the case in Star Trek. Now, of course, there could be there could be the possibility that maybe we don't have the right instruments to listen to aliens. I mean, they may see and hear in different frequencies than we do, or I, I mean, well, not it, not just having different senses. Yeah, of course, but, that's important. A lot of scientists have talked about that. As far as we know, radio is the easiest way to send messages across stars. But it could be possible that once civilizations have advanced enough, there could be a new substrate of communication. Yeah. I, we, of course, can't even speculate about what that substrate could be. It could be quantum communications, really. Uh, I mean, anything. But the point is that at some point in time, aliens will s will discover this new substrate of communication, and then they'll join the galactic community because they'll be able to communicate in a more advanced way than they would have if they built large radio towers. And maybe the reason why we are not getting any radio messages is because radio messaging and radio communication is a short-term way of communicating. It might, in human terms, radio is, I mean, radio has been around for over 70 years, and it probably will be around for at least another hundred. But in galactic terms, in interstellar terms, that's nothing. 100, 200 years is a very brief amount of time. And so it's possible in the eventual evolution of our civilization, we could develop a new form of communication that will last 10,000 years, and then that could explain why we haven't gotten any contact from aliens, because no alien civilization uses radio for that long. Of course, there's an there's another idea. Th and this is another sort of root idea, one that other uh, solutions branch off of. It's possible that maybe right now is the perfect time for the universe. It, the conditions are just right for intelligent life to be developing. It could be possible that intelligent species are developing alongside each other. And so we are not seeing any galactic civilizations because we're all still moving there. It's possible we have, um, you know, it's possible we have kin far across the, the galaxy, who are developing the same way we are. Maybe a hundred years forward, a hundred years back, something like that. Maybe even a thousand. But not a big enough gap for um, galactic civilizations to happen. You see, I, I do find issue with this possible solution, though, because an alien species only needs to be a million years more advanced. And that argument falls to pieces. Right. And a million years is, like we said before, there, the universe is 13.8 billion years. So a million years is less than, it's what, 1% of 1% kind of, uh, of the lifetime of the universe. And the idea that aliens all started developing at the last 1% of 1%. And it doesn't of, seem that likely. And of course, the sun isn't one of the oldest stars in the universe. Other stars would have developed long before the sun, so... Although I have heard some arguments that because the sun was developed, I, th I think what it's called is a second generation star. Right. And it was developed not uh, initially from the original mass of the universe, but it was developed in the nebula after a supernova explosion which endowed it with heavy metals, something that's that we at least think might be necessary for life to exist. So it's, it's possible, true. they say, that life wasn't able to develop in the early stages of the universe because there were only simple elements. But then once the second generation stars started to exist, then life was possible. As far as the possible solution that you had, though, I still do find issue with it because... Yeah. Like I said, you only need an alien species to be more advanced by a million years, and the argument falls to pieces. Well, I mean, then, of course, you could have the argument that they would have had that new advancement in technology that would make us unable to communicate with them. I yes. Mean, well, you can also combine these solutions. It's yeah. possible that multiple things have happened that... And it, not not only possible, but I would argue likely yeah. that a lot of these solutions are uh, are happening and and i mean combinations of the solutions are true so and some of these are kind of half truths because maybe maybe it's not that alien civilizations develop ai and the ai rule maybe they rule with ai and they kind of have a have a partnership hmm. with ai i mean there there's a multitude of of possible solutions and combinations one of the but, solutions uh, i mean of course there's always the possibility that intelligent life may simply not be able to contact 
Because, I mean, consider the resources it takes to get to the the moon, or even to Mars, right? It takes so long to get there with our current technology. Even assuming we could somehow travel at light speed, it would take us, what, 30 years to get to the nearest star? That's true, but that might explain why we haven't been visited yeah, by aliens. Because it may be possible that we're too far away. I th well, what I was going to say was, I think that explains why we might not have been visited by aliens. Yeah. It doesn't make much sense, uh, at least for biological organisms, it doesn't make much sense to spread throughout the galaxy, because our our bodies, and uh, and based on, our, based on what we know about Earth life, as, assuming alien bodies are just as fragile as we are, yeah. it doesn't really make sense to move beyond our home planet. I mean, even moving to Mars is... Uh, it might be disastrous for the human body because there's less gravity and our bones will become weaker and, and atrophy. And so the idea that aliens would just spread themselves throughout the galaxy seems seems too unlikely for me. But one thing that possible solution doesn't address is the communication argument because you don't need to travel to somewhere to send them a radio signal. Well, there's another argument to be made about communications. It's possible that because the universe is so vast and because b because there's so many directions to send radio signals in, maybe everyone's listening and no one's sending. I mean, how many transmissions does Earth send out to deep space? We don't send out transmissions in every direction all day, every day, besides our regular radio transmissions, and those wouldn't even be able to be picked up by stars further away than the closest star. And that's, I mean, that's kind of called the SETI solution. That's because, if you don't know, SETI is an acronym for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Right. And it's a program on Earth, it's a non-profit, that has existed since, I believe, at least the 70s. And it just listens uh, for radio signals from, from the dark. It listens in outer space to see whether aliens exist. Uh, essentially, and it hasn't it hasn't found any uh, good evidence that aliens do exist. Of course, it's just going to keep searching until it does. Yeah. But the whole argument is that what if every alien species has their own SETI? All they do is listen to see whether they'll get signals, but they never try to contact each other. And also, this this might compound to what I was talking about earlier in that. Alien species, and indeed humans, might be afraid to try to contact other alien species. Maybe for rational reasons, but also maybe for irrational reasons. And I would, I would say maybe, maybe ultimately the most likely solution to this is the universe is big. The universe is gigantic. The universe is more empty space than it is stuff. And you can't always send radio signals out everywhere. And we can't search every corner. So it's possible that intelligent life exists out in the universe, that it exists out somewhere, that it exists maybe even in conjunction with us, but we can't know about each other because... We're just too far apart. I mean, think about the distance from Earth to Mars. That's tiny. That's minute well, in I don't, the scale of the universe. I I also don't think that's even a valid comparison because a, a lot of people, maybe even most, ha don't have an idea of how far astronomical distances are. And not that this is any fault with their education or whether they whether they know anything, but it's it's mostly because we have we have good concepts for dealing with earth distances. I know how far it is from here to Rayleigh's, but I can't really imagine how far it is from here to the from here to the moon, and I can't even come close to imagining how far it is from here to Andromeda. Yeah. And so that kind of adds uh, it kind of adds another layer. It might be possible that everything's just too far apart. Alien species can never contact each other because it just takes too long for them to send messages. In some way, though, that could be some small comfort. If we never find aliens, if if throughout all of our years of searching, humanity never contacts or is contacted, maybe we're all just living our own... Maybe intelligent species are all living their own separate existences out, always looking never able to find out. Well, it almost conjures up a picture of people floating around on the ocean, uh, kind of on boats, and they don't know the existence of other people in the ocean, but they're just kind of floating around. And you could look out and, and you could see no one in your horizon, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other people on the ocean. Maybe, maybe we'll never learn about the other boats, but at least we can take comfort. Other boats could be out there. 
This has been What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk.